Hey all, something that has not been in the bingo card of ContainLab this year was definitely a VS Code extension. But that's apparently what has been cooking for the past couple of weeks, and when I first heard it from my colleague Florian that he's working on that, I was quite surprised and a bit skeptical. I did not find myself using a VS Code extension for ContainLab, given that we have an intuitive and simple CLI. But you know what? My mind has been totally changed once I started to play with this extension, and I think you will find it quite useful. So let's see what VS Code extension for ContainLab does and how to use it. Well, we of course start with the installation. So what you see here is a, a Solinux VXLAN handling lab, a simple lab that we use to demonstrate how, how VLAN handling works on SOLinux. I have it currently cloned on my Mac machine. And as you can see, there is nothing else. I just cloned the repository. I don't have this lab running. There is no containers spinning up, but we want to start managing this lab with VS Code extension as opposed to, you know, your typical CLI CLAP commands. So how do you install it? Well, of course, you just go to the extensions uh, menu in VS Code and you just type container lab. The extension has been published under SRL Labs organization name, so we will just install it. Of course, give it five stars when you uh, start playing with it and you will definitely enjoy it. But now when the instantial is installed, look at that. It asks or it suggests that Container Lab is not installed, so you clearly should install it to start using this extension. So now you don't even need to know how to install Container Lab. Just click on this button and in a matter of a few seconds, Container Lab will be installed on your lab sorry, on your VM or your machine, and you will be able to start using the VS Code extension. You see the extension has this nice container lab logo that you can click on and see what the, the extension kind of does and what it, what it feels. So what it says to me that our user is not in the CLAB admins group, and that is a recent container lab development that allows a user to be calling container lab commands without using sudo. So it kind of prompts you to add your user to the CLAP admins group. And that is exactly what we'll do. So we'll let extension handle this aspect for us. And what we see now, once we install the extension, is, is that it lists the detected CLAP YAML file. Now, the CLAP YAML file is, of course, in our workspace that is part of the container lab uh, directory that we just cloned. But the nice thing is that you can now interact with this lab using the extension. Like, for example, you can immediately open the YAML file or the CLAB YAML file and see what this lab is composed of. A very easy way to just, you know, click on this pencil button and see the extension, uh, see the contents of your container lab topology file. Of course, it would be a remiss not having a way to deploy the lab. So what you can do is that you can just uh, right click with your mouse on the lab and say deploy now container lab will start deploying the lab depending on if you have containers already pulled or not it will take a different amount of, different amount of time nevertheless it will be as fast as you would use a cli now you just don't need to remember the deploy commands the destroy commands you can just use your mouse and you know get around your lab as the deployment successfully finished, we can either show the logs of it, and it will be your usual CLI output of the CLAB deploy command. You will see the table, you will see all the good stuff about the containers that has been created. We just don't need it just yet, because all, everything is now possible in this extension window. You can open up the this ex expanding icon, and you will see the containers that are part of this lab. So you see these two clients, and you see the two Astro Linux containers. The items in this list will be named exactly the same way as the containers are named, exactly the same way that as you would see them in the table. It's just like way more probably user-friendly. You can just not leave your VS Code or Codium window and interact with your lab. Now, what you can do with this, the lab is running, it's great, but you know, you just, you, you, you're not just looking at the lab. You want to interact with the nodes, you want to connect to the nodes. And that is, again, something that we have simplified with this extension. Now, if you want to connect to an SO Linux node, you can click on this button, which says connect to SSH. And once you do that, the command will be executed in the VS Code terminal window. And as you can see, I am immediately in my SO Linux CLI shell. Very convenient, very handy. If you want to connect to SRL2, Click on this one. They will be in separate tabs in your VS Code terminal, and you will be able to switch back and forth between the two. Very easy to connect to the nodes. Great. Now, what about the 
Linux clients. They do not have, or sometimes they do, but most of the times they do not have a search server running. So in that case, you will use this next button that is named attach to shell. Click on this guy. It will be your regular docker exact command. And now I'm in the shell of my container. You don't need to remember or memorize this CLAP commands with flags and arguments. You can just use your uh, window here and your mouse to navigate around the lab, connect to the nodes, and do all of this good stuff. Well, of course, if you just hover over this uh, element, it will show the state of this element. It like ID, the state, is it running or not, the kind of the container, and all the good stuff. But check what you can do if you open up the list of the element itself. We will show you what interfaces any given container has. So in my case, the SRL2 container has two data interfaces, E11, E110, and a management interface, and a bunch of different other stuff that is too complicated to explain at this point. If you open up the Linux container, you will see that it has, again, a bunch of Ethernet interfaces with VLANs, because this is about VLANs. We have a bunch of VLAN tagged interfaces. And you can see that they also indicate with their colors if they are running or not, if they're basically up or down. So you can definitely see what's going on here. Now, that's great. So this is the VLAN handling lab. I know that I can ping 10.102. And this is a ping that is happening from client one to client two. My client one has 10.101 interface addressed and my client two, that is, in the other domain has a different address, 10102. Now, I just mentioned a bunch of IP interfaces and how the lab is composed, like how the elements are connected. But this is not clear, right? You look at this very short topology, but it still kind of requires some mental gymnastic for you to understand how these four elements are connected. Well, of course, it was time to simplify that. So what you can do now, you can easily graph your topology. Now, we had the CLAP graph command for a couple of years now, but we kind of improved that with a VS Code extension. Now, you click right button on the lab and do graph draw IO, for example. We will immediately generate the draw, draw IO diagram for you, and the extension is bundled with the draw IO plugin so that it opens up the draw your image right away in the tab. So now you see that instead of just showing you uh, the, the, the file, we can render it here in the terminal window. Yes, I know I have this part zoomed in, so I will need to close this up and close this window. We don't need this as well. But now you can see that you can grasp the topology and what is being kind of done in the topology itself by looking at this diagram. So you see that we have a client to connect it with Ethernet 1 to SRL 2, Ethernet 1, 1, and it's basically a chain of two clients and two SRL Linux switches. Very easy to see now. And you can, of course, uh, move these elements and you know make a very nice diagram, change the icons if you want. This has been generated in your workspace, so you can save it and make a really nice and handy diagram. So I'm just, I just wanted to show you that you can generate the draw your diagram. You can use the draw your interactive mode and change the parameters, the layout, the graph icons, the way that interfaces are create, the, displayed and all these aspects of nice drawing stuff. Besides draw your, we have different ways of graphing the topology. You can of course use the web graph that is something that has been with container lab for quite a while and recent de development the top of viewer a web interface that shows you the topology that you probably would use quite often that is the familiar drag and drop you know kind of click around stuff uh, that again displays the topology information so you can see what is being connected to what which interfaces are being used you can click on the node and see the most essential information about it, like what IP address it has, which image it uses, this kind of stuff. You can group these things, you can display or hide the interface labels. Very cool, and as you can see, it's very fast to render this kind of topology. So now we know that client one pings client two, and we still have these pings running here, right? So we see that it takes like, uh, one millisecond, 0 0.2, depends on, on the phase of the moon. 
Something that we have incorporated in the VS Code extension as well is the way for you to easily do the link impairments. So what, what I want to show you is that you can go to any interface that you see here. Let's say I want to introduce a delay on interface E110 of SRL1. Let's see how we can do this. So we go to VLAN, uh, CLAB VLAN SRL1. This is this guy. And we want to introduce a delay on this interface. Now our traffic, of course, clearly passes through this interface. So if we introduce a delay here, we expect to see different numbers in the ping statistics. So I'm clicking right button on interface E110. And you see here that I can set a delay jitter, packet loss, rate limit, and corruption rate. So I want to have some delay. So let's click on this. It asks me what I want to, which delay I want to set. So let's see one second, will it work? I hit enter. Hey, look at this, 1000 milliseconds right away. So now you see that you can do this link impairments quite easy without really bothering with different CLAP tools commands that the impairment was hitting under. Now you can do this from the comfort of your VS Code kind of graphical experience. Okay, now I wanted to show you something else. Besides just having these commands to manage your lab lifecycle, deploying, destroying, all that good stuff, setting link impairments, seeing which links are being part of your nodes, there is some other cool aspects of VS Code extension for Container Lab. And what you are looking at right now is a system that I just logged in, a different virtual machine that I have, and it lists all the labs that are running on this machine. So as you see, I'm having three labs right now. Two of them are running because they have these green circles indicating that they're running. One is in my current workspace, has not been deployed just yet. So you can see that you can grasp which labs are being running on your machine and you can either you know destroy them or you can keep them running you can explore where they are you can even open them up in in a different window so if i want to see where this lab is deployed or this one i can just say open folder in new window and my vs code will open a new window for me for this particular lab with with a workspace of this particular lab but what i wanted to show in this example is that you can do something really nice with labs that has that have this long running or long deploying instances like VM based containers. So I want to deploy this Anysac MaxSec lab. Like this lab is not a joke. It's it's a lot of stuff being done here. A lot of SRS containers, they take a lot of time to be to, to boot on. And there's also some dependencies between the nodes because we want to have a staggered deploy to save on resources. So I wanted to show you another aspect of the VS Code extension that I find quite interesting. So let's start the deployment. So we will deploy with a cleanup this time. The lab will start deploying. And while it does that, what is, what is really interesting is that you can go into this lab while it's being deployed and take a look at the PE1, for example. So it says it's running, but yeah, the VM is still booting. What you can do is that you can open the log so you can see what's going on. And as you know, VM, VM based nodes take some time to be booted on. So if I click on the logs, I will be connected to the stream of this particular boot process. So instead of figuring out how do I see the logs of a particular node in my lab, I just click on this nice list icon and I will see how the node is booting up. Like you see the boot log of SRS, there are some things going on. We are booting the image, we are ex extracting the image from the, from the uh, disk image, and then we start to the boot process. Again, very convenient. I can switch to another one and see how P4 is doing. Like P4 probably is not even, I oh know it's, it's booting. Some nodes are waiting for others to be reported healthy, but okay, P4 has been in the first stage of deployment. Again, very easy, and you can switch back and forth and see, you know, what are the logs of my P1 or P4, and how are they how are they doing? As you can see, because the lab is not really running just yet, you will see this yellow icon here. The lab is still undergoing some some boot process. But then something else is quite cool is actually we simplified the. Wireshark user experience with container lab extension. If I go back to my lab that has these pings flowing, you can see that every interface that you have under a particular node has this nice thin shark icon. Now, 
as you can imagine, this means if you click on this, we are expected to see some packets flowing. Now, the packet capture is leveraging the Edshark integration. So the Edshark is a project by, by Simmons, the open source project that allows you to create a web UI for the Wireshark interfaces or a web UI for container interfaces, which you can sniff traffic from. We just use it for packet capture in Container Lab. Now, what we can do is that we can say, I want to sniff traffic from this interface. But before we do that, what if you don't have Edshark installed? What if you just started with Contain Lab and you don't even know what Edshark is? So we have created the command uh, as part of this extension. So if you type Contain Lab, you will see a bunch of commands that are available to you as the VS Code extension user. And one of them is install Edshark. So if I click on this one, VS Code extension knows the command that needs to be called or executed to install Edshark. And as you can see, this command is just a curl and docker compose up. And now my Edshark is running, so I can use one of these nice little fins to start sniff traffic from. Let's see how it works. So I click on this E110 fin shark item. Now it says starting Edshark capture on CLAB blah blah blah. And in a few seconds, you should see a, v a Wireshark window opening up and you will be able to see the traffic. There are my ICMP lovely pinks, replies and echoes going on. So you can clearly see how easy it is now to consume these famous container lab features that have been around for quite a while. The VS Code extension just makes it so much easier to interface with for maybe not experienced users, I would say, most of the times. But even if you are an experienced user, you might find this experience more akin to your liking. So yeah, definitely give it a go. It's a great open source extension. If you want to know how it works, it's all in the open source. You can find the topology or the, you, you can find the repository under the SRL Labs GitHub org. And this work has been done by Florian, Callum, Gordon and a bunch of other contributors. You can find all of us in our Contain Lab Discord. Give this extension a go. It's a great one. We will hope you like it. Give it a star as a review. That would be also quite welcome. Thanks a lot. Till next time.